Welcome back. Salesforce 5.5% higher after beating uh, earnings. Uh, let's uh, bring in John Freeman, analyst uh, from CFRA Research. He's got a strong buy on the stock. John, no doubt you like these numbers. Why is it jumping? Certainly. Um, well, you know what? I think it, it, it's kind of interesting because Workday also beat yesterday, but uh, did not. Um, uh, but but the stock did not go. Salesforce, I think, is different I, just because of the. I think the expectations were, were more muted. Um, it's a large, you know, it's a large company, and and for them to beat for, uh, to this degree, you know, at least on the top line, uh, they beat by seventy million, which is a you know pretty significant beat. But the beat on the bottom line was even more impressive, um, and then the raised guidance. Uh, you know, they raised guidance from uh, 341 at the top of the you know EPS line, 341 to uh, 381, which was you know uh, I, I just thought that was uh, those are above uh, our estimates and our estimates for you know were certainly ahead. So it was um, it, it was it's it's pretty. Uh, I thought I thought that the bottom line beat in particular um, was particularly impressive. You know, given all of the things that are going on, right? So, yeah, going on, which is the, some of the concerns around the Slack deal. I guess the price they paid, the timing of the deal, it seemed like peak work from home. What do the executives, what does Mark Benioff have to answer on the call to investors that continue to question this? Um, I, think the, I think the key question um, will be what, what are the integration costs? Um, you know, Slack is a, is a good size company, and as well as the, you know, the, the technology integration costs, not just the people, right? That's always where the bugaboo is in you know any sort of uh, acquisition, but tech in particular. Um, and but Salesforce has a has built a core competency around M and A, um, and they've done bigger and bigger deals. You know, Tableau, MuleSoft, um, that have been very successful and accretive much faster than people expected. Again, both on the top end and 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 on the bottom line. So I think. Um, I think that's you know kind of you kind of have to hear with Mark Getty up right his his attitude and kind of the the word you know the language that he uses around you know uh, how the how the integration is going and and all of that stuff right. What's your key questions for the call? Uh, my key question actually would be um, so he talks about you know the customer their new customer 360 platform. I want to know. Like what large, you know, large enterprise customers are adopting that wholesale, right? And and all of the things that go with it, because that gives you an indication on down the line for you know subsequent customers, you know, what kind of upsell they get with Slack, what kind of upsell they get with MuleSoft, what kind of you know all of these companies that they've and products and offerings that they have purchased, right? The whole idea is that they've got a you know large uh, customer base, and the idea is you can sell these, exi you know, the, the existing customers additional offerings. And that's, you know, that has, that's just tremendously uh, accretive when you're, you know, when you're sort of this size and, and you have the, you know, Fortune 500 kind of uh, uh, customers, right? So I, I think that's kind of my, uh, that's one. The other is, I, I, I want to know what their progress is in Asia. I've always sort of uh, thought that Asia has lagged in CRM adoption. So that's more of a long-term question, but it seems like Salesforce is getting some traction there, but I would like to get more, you know, I'd like to understand that a little bit more, I think. Um, I think those are, those are the two ones at the top of mind uh, at the moment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.